Hello everyone and welcome back to the plot. Today we are going to crack on with <laughs> that crow. Um, we are going to crack on with doing all the jobs, all the planting out. Why are you shouting? <laughs> I think the things I want to focus on today are getting the leaks in all of the flowers because some flowers are starting to flower inside the greenhouse um i don't think i'm gonna put the pumpkins out yet and i know uh, it's getting late but also the weather has been so cold and dreary and it's supposed to rain for the next um 10 days <laughs> so i just feel like if i put the pumpkins out they're just gonna get eaten and i'm out of strolch so i'm a little bit worried to um put the pumpkins out but i'm gonna try a couple We'll sacrifice some squash, I think. Um, so yeah, I've got a to-do list and we're gonna go and check all the things off it, or as many of the things as possible. So let's go. A couple, actually, a couple of other things that I've noticed that I need to add to my to-do list. Um, so if you remember the mystery dahlias that I put in, I dug them out for my garden. A couple of the tubers that were in my garden I had to get rid of because they were showing signs of dahlia gall, crown gall. And I think this one also had crown gall, but it wasn't that obvious. So with crown gall, it means it will put out loads of little leafy shoots and produce loads of leaves, but it won't produce flowers or not many flowers and it can also spread <laughs> to other tubers and i feel like because i've put this in the ground this bed is now contaminated and i won't be able to put dahlias in it again um so i'm actually going to dig it out and put a squash in its place and yeah just be a lot more careful next time actually this one in this bed also looks like it's putting up quite a lot of shoots um i don't know so i think that one must be infected as well but weirdly this one in this corner looks absolutely fine um it's only put out two or three shoots which is what you want to see in a dahlia not loads and loads and loads of little ones so yeah i thought i had brought tubers that weren't infected but it seems that most of the tubers from my garden were infected which is annoying so i'm trying to work out the spacing for leeks um apparently for baby leeks you can plant them 10 centimeters apart but if you want larger leeks it's 15 centimeters i'm not too sure i think i'm just gonna like dip all the holes first and then see i'm also going to trim all the le leeks give them a little haircut and then when it comes to putting them in, I'm going to trim the roots as well. I'll leave a link to an Instagram account, Steve. Um, he has a really good like leek growing guide. That's kind of what I'm following this year. In the past, I've only ever had baby leeks and I'd really like to get some very big chunky leeks. So, hmm. yeah, I think I should space them further apart hopefully get some good leaks this year anyway yeah check out cheat steve's instagram account for um leak related things <laughs> also some of these onions are looking so good <laughs> look at this one though it hasn't got that much of a bulb but it's got like the fattest stalk ever and it's actually kind of creepy <laughs> A lot of the leeks did, not leeks, onions did actually flower, but that's okay, I don't mind, I'll just have like smallish onions to harvest when and when, um, rather than keeping for um, storing, that's alright, I don't mind. I have been feeding my little friend. <laughs> I'm 90% sure this is the same crow not crow rook raven that comes by um it's got like white patches on its neck and chest oh it's getting a little bit worried <laughs> but yeah it's always here when i'm here and i've been feeding it so i think it knows now but it's still a little bit um scared of me it's cute though 
Right, and these are all the seedlings that need to get out today because, yeah, the nasturtiums, they're looking yellow and they've got flowers. This is my last courgette. I think it's my last hope. And it's still, it looks terrible. Um, we've got some chard, muscabias, dahlias, sunflowers, cosmos. Yeah, we're just gonna plonk this out. Feeder is filled. I wonder how long it will take before the blue tits and cool tits will come back. I think I probably should have taken a picture or a video of the Zalia tuber that I dug up so that somebody could tell me what actually was wrong with it because I read that crown gall can still affect plants like courgette and I went and planted a patty pan squash in the place of the dahlia tuber but if it was leafy gall it wouldn't have really affected anything else um, but I also read that you can clear crown gall and leafy gall out of the soil just plant like potatoes or something the following year and um, it should die, <laughs> die off. So I think that's what I'll do. Anyway, moving on to the leeks. They're pretty well spaced out. I don't know what will happen. Uh, <laughs> I would love to get some really fat, chunky leeks. I've trimmed the roots off and the tops and I'm just using the pole to keep them upright because I'm not going to backfill them, I'm going to water them in. That's what you're supposed to do with leeks, but in the past I've done it both ways, as in like water them in or just push the dip into the, the dibbed hole, and they've turned out fine <laughs> both times. I think because this soil was fresh and fluffy, uh, when I watered it in, you can't really see the dibbed hole anymore, so it looks like I've just pushed the soil around it, but... I haven't done that this time. Um, I think they'll be fine. Uh, they're still alive today, uh, a week later after filming, <laughs> and they're definitely not as yellow anymore. I think it's my ultimate goal to be able to make leek and potato soup with my own leeks and my own potatoes. Uh, I don't think that will be this year because I only planted first early and second early potatoes, um, and then the potatoes in the bucket are I think they're called fur apple pink. I don't know if I mentioned that before in another video, but yeah, the main crop potatoes I have are fur apple pink, and I'm not sure what those are good for yet, but I'm excited to harvest them this summer. Okay, we are just going to trust the process. Um, I'm sure they'll be fine. They are falling over a bit now I've watered them in, so... I don't know, is that cheating if I help crop them up? <laughs> but obviously when they get bigger, I will be hilling them up. Um, yeah, hopefully they will turn more green and less yellow now they are in, in the ground. But I've still got loads left. So I've got some that were in the pot and then the ones that were in the cell tray. So I'm thinking about doing a couple of lines rows in here um yeah i'm gonna remove that daily i think but anyway i'm thinking we're gonna come back to this and get um some other stuff done first right i'm going to remove that dahlia sprinkle some of this around the beans get those poor marigolds in and yeah hopefully these will be less yellow as well after they've had a feed with this stuff and probably some liquid feed as well
right, I've just scattered in the feed, stuck a patty pan squash on the end, which will hopefully just like spill over. Um, I think we're gonna have to tackle this now. Nasturtium, cosmos, three or four sunflowers left, and I think three seed dahlias, and hmm, I don't know where to put them. This bed is looking so full now, look at that, amazing. I might stick a couple of nasturtium on the end here. Uh, this bed's really empty actually. Um, Look at all the weed seeds that have popped up. This is the stuff that I used from the old compost heap and there's absolutely tons of weeds in there. Um, kind of regret, <laughs> regret doing that now. So I was going to put the borage in this bed with the pumpkins but um, I think I'm going to put them by the pond because I know they will self seed absolutely everywhere. So um, if I put one there, one on the corner there, yeah, <laughs> I think so. I'm going to stick a couple of sunflowers on the edges and I think nasturtium. Oh no, a cosmos. I've just had another idea. I think I'm going to put that bed there um, instead of there because I can have like one big sunflower at the front and then some cosmos yeah and it can just be a flower bed and I can still have um, a bench there eventually once I go through this mound <laughs> yeah I want a flower bed here okay that's what I'm gonna do but not today it does look really messy here today. I think I'm gonna have to do like a speed clean up next time I'm here. I'd love to tackle this as well. Oh my gosh, so much to do. <laughs> right, I'll save two sunflowers and four cosmos for there. Um, sunflower, sunflower. Maybe I'll place the pumpkins to see where I'm gonna put them. And then I'll just dot flowers all around them. Okay, that's what I'm going to do.
So we're gonna have creams and blue in here with some cosmos and sunflowers, which I've just chucked in and a couple of nasturtium. Then we'll have the red curry and the Utsu black going over the archway. Hopefully they'll all brush out. I'm sure they will. Um, still a little nervous to get those planted out today. Um, I think I'm going to not do that. <laughs> then we'll have a couple more cosmos, patty pan on the corner. But my main big idea is actually having the Dilby Littles here uh, grow them vertically on a TV with a sunflower and cosmos around the edge. Okay, yes, because, um, yeah. <laughs> I think having like a teepee here, especially having it with pumpkins climbing on it, um, will mean some kind of privacy. Um, yeah, still fit a bench there, still have my sunflower hedge next year. Yeah, this is going to be good. I've just been standing here thinking about the pumpkins worrying <laughs> I would do it but it's cold it's almost mid-June and it's cold um, and it is supposed to rain quite a lot over the next week or two oh, I don't know I really don't know what to do I think I have like one of each spare if these get eaten. No, I'm not gonna do it today. I'm not. <laughs> I put a poll up on Instagram um, and I'm waiting for people to vote, but honestly, I don't feel confident putting these pumpkins out. Okay, I'm gonna get all the flowers planted and then we will come back to the pumpkins last. two things I'm going to do today is top up the potatoes and sow another row of carrots. These are coming on so well. I have thinned them out but they might need another bit of thinning out. Gosh, it's really filling up here isn't it? That's good. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah, I want this to be another little pumpkin bed. I need all the pumpkins. So oh yeah, I pulled the radishes out, um, they've all been nibbled and they've all started bolting. So this wasn't very successful sewing, look at that. Yeah, I just, I don't think I'm going to direct sew anything here. <laughs> These are for the compost I'm afraid. Speaking of compost, I really need to get a compost bin going um, because I don't know where to put these now. Um, yeah, that's a job for next week. Yes. I just tied in the sweet peas again, but I didn't do a proper job of it. I've got this much string left, so <laughs> um, I will get 
I'll get some more string and we'll do a proper job next time. I think I'm going to pick then. I'm going to look weird walking home with a little, little posy though. Sweet peas. Oh, they smell so nice. Oh my gosh, they smell amazing. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna walk home with these now. And wow, the colours are just so pretty. I can't believe it. Oh, I love them. I love them so much. <laughs> okay. Oh, that is the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. I feel like so many things were ticked off the to-do list. The only thing that I didn't get done was to prune and tie in tomatoes, but I think that's just gonna be work for another day, especially if it's gonna rain all week. Um, I don't mind coming down and then doing a little bit in the greenhouse. But anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. I'm feeling so happy. Oh, I love my sweet bees. <laughs> Okay, I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.